Hello everybody and welcome to part 5 of generating functions. So far we've seen that uh, quite a few of our problems with generating functions involve having to multiply polynomials of large or even infinite length and in uh, video 2 I discussed more of the manipulations we can we can do with that um, but the thing is as convoluted as polynomial multiplication is it actually gives us a very uh, I, guess, I guess the form of it if we can identify sort of when we're multiplying polynomials in specific when we're multiplying generating functions it can be a huge help. And so what I mean by that is if we have two functions uh, a of x and b of x which generate um, their capital letter sequences um, and, and let's say we're interested in what a times b is and I'm not going to write the, the of x's here but what is a times b right we're, we're a lot of times we want to multiply uh, as we saw in, in just the first example of generating functions we had to multiply polynomials and it really it was like we were sort of doing the same casework problem but just with you know polynomial multiplication it, it didn't look much better right but in fact what if we want to know what the and I'm using a notation I define in previous video but uh, what if we wanted to know what the coefficient of the nth term that's what this notation means of a of x times b of x is what is that exactly well it's all the ways to make or, or it's sort of okay let's say let's say we pick we pick um, well obviously so we're so we're multiplying, right? And we and we sort of have a notion of a foil from high school, um, or a generalized distributive property. And so we sort of have to pick factors, right, from from a and b that that multiply so that we have an x to the n term. Well, we can sort of cycle through. Is the is the wording I use? Cycle through all the terms until we get to in in a right a sub n x sub n because if we pick any higher degree we can't divide out by x there's no negative powers so we'll always have something higher so we have to have one of these first n plus one terms so let's say we choose a sub zero then we have to match it with b b sub n x sub n right because 0 plus n is n what if we picked a sub 1 times x then we have to pick b sub n minus 1 times x sub n minus 1 because 1 plus n minus 1 is n right we're choosing the, the ones that add up to n and so we sort of go across in like diagonal fashion until we get to a sub n x sub n or x to the n where we have to pick b sub zero right because zero plus n is n and so this sort of this plus idea gives us what our coefficient is and it's um, I'll, I'll write the, the thing later but it's the the sum of a sub k times b sub n minus k All right and this is k going from 0 to n and we sort of see how we got that right so each of the each of the, the indices have to add up to n and so this is the obviously the best way to to sort of get that right just k n minus k, n plus n minus k is n. 
So, this is all fine and good, but this actually has great impact. And um, in the next in, in the next problem solving type video I do, I'll, I'll show where we this problem just just goes to pieces. And um, in light of that, I think I'm going to take. Uh, the time here to explain it doesn't really fit in with the video but uh, I have time and that is the negative binomial theorem or the generalized binomial theorem generalized binomial coefficients at least so um, in in my previous series on combinatorics I define I only define binomial coefficients or combinations on integers, but it is useful for us to use them for non-integer values, even though it doesn't make logical sense to, to do that. And so let's say we have some real number alpha and some integer k, a positive integer, or non-negative. This k should be non-negative. Um, then a or alpha choose k is equal to k factorial uh, on the bottom, and then up top we have alpha times alpha minus one times all the way to alpha minus k plus one. So this is the uh, first k sort of numbers that are spaced one apart. It's sort of how you can read that. And um, this is fine and good. We we understood this for um for for what we were doing with integer values right because we had what we had if it was n choose k we had n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial and we sort of divided out the n minus k factorial uh factor and so that's sort of where this comes from now the binomial theorem states that 1 plus x is equal to the sum as k goes <coughs> from uh, from 0 to infinity of r choose k times x to the k. And um, uh, a note here is that for any alpha, alpha choose 0 is equal to 1. So anyway, um, this formula only holds for absolute value of x less than 1. It well if if alpha if alpha is just a real is is just a real number um, or a non integer. But uh, you know, for integers for integers we kind of have different rules, but this is like generalized because uh, as you can see here the, this this is infinite at um obviously we that would just uh, make things become infinite yeah <laughs> uh, anyway but this or I guess this is really bad okay um, but this is this restriction is fine because we already have it on on things like one over one minus x, and and again we're we're sort of using gen, uh, generating functions in the sense of either series, like I did the last video with the the like Fibonacci numbers times a power or divided by a power of two. Um, like basically, whenever we use x, like plug in a value of x, it's gonna be its absolute value is going to be less than 1. So this restriction doesn't really matter for us. And most of the time we're not even using values of x. So no need to really worry about that. But don't try plugging in like uh, 2 to the r and expecting it to be the sum of all these binomial coefficients because it's not. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but anyway. So just two things this video. Uh, convolution sum so we'll we'll deal with something that looks like this in uh, the next problem solving type video and we will 
necessarily use this in future videos, so uh, make sure you know this. That, that was ugly. Anyway, thank you for watching my videos, and I'll see you in the next one.